beautiful day outside, isn't it? It's cool. You know why God gave us a brain? Anybody have an idea why we have a brain? So we can think. We can think what we want in life. We can think what we want to do. Who we want to be. What kind of life we want to lead. You know what the devil does? He tries to destroy that. He'll take you places that you think is pretty neat until you get there. God will come into your heart. I believe he's been in my heart since the day I was conceived. I am not always following that. I've run with the devil. I've done some silly things. And my life's getting better because I do believe in God. And I believe he will lead me in the right direction. And here lately, he has been on my heart to do what he wants me to do. And he wants me to have a simple life. I'm having that by following his rules and his uh, things he's put in my life. He's directing me. He's guiding me. He's making me help people. Not making me. He's giving me a choice. And that's why he has gave us a brain. We do have a choice to be what we want to be. He loves us so much that he gave us this choice to do what we want. We can run the devil. And you know what that's going to do this I've always had a second. All God, or all the devil's going to do is turn you into a turd. And you might stay pretty good for a little while. But you're eventually going to dry up and be gone. And that's when you're going to be in hell. So where do you want to be? You want to be in hell with the devil? Or you want to be in, in God's footsteps doing what he wants you to do in your life? And that's the choices I make to follow our Lord. Now, not every day has been the best for me. There's days where I'm getting off track a little bit. <laughs> uh, but the minute I start praying, I'm right back on God again. I pray more every day, and I'll just pray in the morning. I pray all day long. Everything that comes up comes to me, I try and pray first and get the wisdom that God will give you to follow his way. So that's, I, have, I, hope, I hope you don't take offense by what I said about the devil, but he is a stinker. <laughs> In more ways than one. I mean, just look at our neighborhood. Look at the world, what he's doing to our world. It is nothing good about him. God created everything. You take advantage of that. So I hope y'all have a good day. He's going to come up and give us some more words of wisdom that come from God. And that's why I'm here today. Is to listen what God put on his heart to tell us. Thank you. Amen. Things upside down and backwards. Including yeah. me. I think I need to stand on my head and pray. <laughs> life bearable when we come together and fellowship and worship. Praise God together. It's a, it's a release of stress for me. But sometimes it creates a lot of stress too. So. Last week, 
I challenged you a four part challenge and I'll remind you of this week in case you forgot and I challenge you to be visionaries to see God doing great things in our church and I also challenge you to be outward focused keep our focus on out beyond our own walls and also challenge us to make investments in eternal things, things of eternal value. And to show faith was the last one, to live in faith and be faith people. Sunday before, I'll remind you of that one in case you forgot, was be different. I challenge you to be different and to be separate. We still have a bottle up here, and you know I shake this thing up every week. As you can see, it's still two. It's separate. We're to be a separate people, separate from the world that we live in. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Be separate, be different. And I'll go back one more Sunday just to remind you that I challenged you to get into the game after the Bible school was over and uh, be a part of the game, to get into the game. <coughs> Bring people to Christ with some reality. It's not a game, it was a phrase to simply be involved. Today I want to talk about being aware. I want to bring things to your remembrance that we should be aware of. And as I said earlier, the scripture is, and I'm going to bring this into focus, chapter 3, Titus, verses 1 through 3, remind the people to be subject to rulers, authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and always to be gentle towards everyone. At one time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. And that's the NIV version of the scripture. And when the Apostle Paul was writing this, letter to Titus, he was purposely and pointingly explaining that he had been sent there to create for a purpose. And that purpose was that the church was in need of some direction, that they needed a direction in which to be sent. And Titus had been given the task of setting things in order. He was also told to teach them some good, sound doctrine. And in the text this morning, as we read, we see that the Apostle Paul instructed Titus to remind the church of a few things. And I believe this morning that it would be valuable for us to consider the instructions that Paul gave Titus. And he says to put them in mind. Or as we would say today, we need to be reminded of some things. So, I want to do that this morning. I want to, like Paul reminded Titus to remind his church, I want to remind us of some things this morning. It's nothing new, and it's nothing that's going to be earth-shattering, or it's simply some things that we need to be reminded of. And the first thing that I want to talk about is our mission. And we've talked a lot about 
love God, love and serve others and grow in Christ lately because this became our mission statement. We've adopted this as our mission statement. But Paul told Titus to remind the church, and I would like to remind us of this this morning, that our mission is to show Christ to the world. And there is a twofold purpose as we think about this in living a Christian life. First of all, it's about pleasing God. The first and most important thing that we do is we ought to live in a way that pleases the great God that created us. The glory of God should always be the objective of whatever we do. We should do it to glorify God. Love God. Living as the Bible commands us is motivated by our desire to love God. When we live the commandments of the Bible, it's because we develop a desire to glorify and love God. That's why Jesus said the first commandment is love God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 says, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whether, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. We are to live to God's glory. That is a mission of our lives and purpose. But we are also to show the world what Christ can do in a person's life. This is what we call our testimony. In verse 2, the word shewing reminds us that there is something to be seen in the life of those that claim to be Christians. Whenever that we claim to be Christians, our lives are to be something that can show the world of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's something that we are to do. It has been said that the only Bible that some people will ever read is the lives of the Christian people that they witness and see as they go down through life's journey. Does our lives present a distorted version of the Bible, or do we present one that is true and a reflection and an interpretation of to what God meant for us to be through His Holy Word? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The Lord said in Matthew chapter 5. One of the reasons that God left us here was that we could show Christ to the lost and dying world that we are living in. That we were to be an example and express the image of the person of Jesus Christ to display Him to the world that we are living in as we live our lives. But we're also, brothers and sisters, to share Christ with the world. This is part of our mission. But we are to involve ourselves both not only in the walk of Christianity, but also the talk of Christianity. This is what we are to show, that, that, that this is what we are about as Christians. And then we are supposed to say also the things of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We refer to it often as the Great Commission. As Jesus departed back to heaven, we recall his words that he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus 
was speaking of how Christians are to share their faith and tell others, talk to others about being saved. Dennis, did we get those words? Okay, put those up, I'm sorry. Get those on the we live in a world where that people need to hear and to know that Jesus died for them on the cross. Evangelism, church, brothers and sisters, is our assignment that we have received from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, from God Himself. And as we spoke of, we are not of this world, but we live in this world. We are separate. We are to be different. If you notice, the bottle is already beginning to separate back into two parts. You see, we live in this world, but our commission is to take as many people to heaven as possible when we leave this world. And our ability as a church and as Christians to fulfill this command depends on showing and sharing Jesus Christ with the world the people that we are living among and with. So I'm challenging us today to be focused on our commission. The mission of living as the Bible directs us and telling other people about Christ Jesus. But Paul also tells Titus here to remind the people that we are to have a certain conduct as Christians. We are to be good citizens. When he says principalities and powers, he refers to those in authority over us. The word power refers to the system by which we are ruled and would be descriptive of things like the laws of our government and our land magistrates speaks of rulers of people placed in authority to enforce the laws and the system like policemen and judges and things of this nature. Paul says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers for there is no power but of God the powers that be are ordained of God. And Paul gives us specific reasons why we should be subject unto the higher powers. First, human government and those that are governing authorities have been ordained of God. Now, sometimes it's hard for us as Christians to recognize that and to see that. But God has established and helped establish these places for our good and for our benefit. Can you imagine what our world would be like without no laws, no rules, no authorities, no government? It would be chaotic and out of control. So, to resist authority is to resist the ordinance of God. Government is designed to promote the good of its citizens and its society. It doesn't always do that, but it was designed for that purpose. We, as Christians, are to be ready to every good work. Ready to help others at all possible chances. Ready to become involved in our community and to do what we can to make it better. Be involved in our government to help make it better. We need to be looking for opportunities, brothers and sisters, as Christians and as a church to help others and to do things that will benefit others. And again, Paul says in Galatians, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. 
So he says, do good to all. Then he just kind of highlights that says, especially Christians. But he doesn't exclude others. Why? The Bible says do good to them to do bad things to you. We are to be kind. And, and Paul reminds Titus, and I'm reminding you this morning, the word translated speak evil means to slander, to curse, to treat with contempt. Christians sometimes find themselves the object of treatment like this, but that is not to be our behavior, brothers and sisters, towards others. Then he has the word broilers and the idea of being controversial, but we're to be friendly and peaceful as a church and as Christians. Paul also uses the word gentle, and that word carries the idea of being moderate and fair in the treatment of others that we come in contact with. We live in a world that is anything but kind to Christians. They're being persecuted around the world and ridiculed and made fun of, killed. We are to respond, which seems very strange to some folks. We are to respond in kindness to the world that we are living in, even though it doesn't treat us kindly. Not only did he remind them of the conduct that they were supposed to be living and treating others, but he also went on, and we need to focus on our conversation to think about it. Remember who we were. We need to remember we were and what we were before Christ Jesus saved us. We remember that we were foolish sometimes, the sinful lives that we lived were foolishness, disobedient and deceived by worldliness. The simple truth is, when you think about it, is there's nothing pretty about the kind of person that we used to be before Christ saved us. We need to think about that and be mindful of it. Some of us may have been worse than others, but hey, we were all sinners. Do you remember how we lived before we were saved by the grace of God? Every word that Paul uses here is descriptive of the world in which we live. The way that it behaves, the way that it acts. We can never forgive or forget, brothers and sisters, that we were just like the world. And that's why that I challenge us to be separate, to be different than the world that we are now living in because when we became Christians, we were to come out of our sinful lifestyle. We were the world, but now we are separate. We're in the world, but we have became different. Sometimes we talk about the good old days and I don't know, but I don't think I want to go back to what some people talk about being the good old days. The life that we lived back then. Do you remember how that you were changed? Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. The scripture says, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Can you remember that change in your life? Thank God that Jesus has made a change in our lives. By His grace, we're saved. He forgave us of all of our sins. And he made us a child of the one true God. And he did it simply because he loved us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. The song says, a saved wretch like me. I once was lost, but now 
I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Do you remember that experience in your life when you come to know Jesus Christ? Remember, he can do that for every person who will come to him in simple faith. We need to be mindful of what God has done for us. And we need to be mindful, Paul said to Titus and also to us, that we need to be mindful of what he wants to do for others. Because what he has done for us, he will do for others too. Peter said, the Lord's not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is a long-suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And John said that as a thief in the night, or the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and destroy, and I come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. So the challenge today to you is to be focused on our commission. As we live in this world, we're supposed to live for Christ and we're supposed to show and tell others of Jesus Christ. I want us to be focused on our conduct. How are we actually living out our lives? What are we doing in our daily lives? And also, what's on our lips? What is it that we're talking about and saying all the time? Are we telling others about what God has done for us? Are we telling them that He can also do that for me? Let's have an invitation song, we're going to stand and offer an invitation.